Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 23. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for round two of our MotoGP career mode on board the Defactory Ducati and I tell you what, I'm ready for this one because we had a cracking qualifying here in the Termas de Rio Hondo circuit. That is the best qualifying I've ever done and that is a relatively competitive lap time against the 120% difficulty AI. Ladies and gentlemen, let's crack on with the sprint. So here we go then, starting in second place, P2 in round two, as we wait for the red lights to go out. Wow, that was a quicker light than I expected, a little bit sluggish off the line, but look at the pace of the Ducati immediately off the line. That is exactly why I wanted this Ducati so much. The acceleration of this red bullet is magnificent. And if we can be competitive here in Termas de Rio Hondo, I'd like to think we can be competitive anywhere. Ooh, as Maverick goes up the inside. I was looking at the graphic on the left-hand side. I didn't know where he went, but I knew he was going to get closer and closer. But here he goes then, shoving him a bit deep into turn four. But we have the speed with Power Setting 3 with the Ducati to pull out a tenth of a second already going into turn number five. That is magnificent. If, honestly, if we can pull it off and we can be successful here in Argentina, that I'm calling it now, we will be a world champion by the end of this season. Honestly, I, I, I'm just so confident after Portimao, the perfect weekend. If you haven't seen Portimao, I would recommend you go and watch it now because I probably will spoil it. In fact, I'm going to spoil it ever so soon. So I'll give you a couple more seconds before you've decided to leave so then you can watch the first race. But anyway, if you're still here, we had a perfect weekend in Portimao. Pole position, fastest lap, sprint victory, race victory, and we looked impervious. Ladies and gentlemen, if this transpires and transfers across to Argentina, then I am going to be one pretty chuffed individual. I'm very happy already with what we've done, but I, I can't believe the difference. I, I felt like no matter what I did, this career mode bike situation would always be too difficult on the hardest difficulty AI, which is of course 120%. But I'm realizing now that we have been underpowered all of this time from the RC16 and the Tech 3 KTM. Oh, goodness me, up on the inside goes Maverick Vinales. I did not anticipate that. Goodness me. I know the AI are quite strong in that corner, but bloody hell, I wasn't expecting a move that aggressive. I should have tensed up because I'm sure two out of two seasons so far in MotoGP, I have been taken out in that very same corner. Once from a teammate and actually probably twice from a teammate. I think first it was Paul Spargro and then I think it was Paul again, but the following season. I don't actually remember. I think, now I think about it, it might be Alex Marquez, but anyway, I digress. Compared to the KTM and to the Gas Gas as well, look at that. Up on the inside is Maverick, I'm trying to get to the commentary here, but uh, Maverick certainly wanting to get past, he's certainly got the hurry on in the uh, early stages of this term as the Rio Hondo circuit into lap two, Maverick now leads. So as I was saying then, basically the difference between the motorcycles of the KTM to this in qualifying, it didn't seem that much different, around 8 tenths of a second difference, if I do remember rightly. But this race pace in Portimao, that was the big telling point for me. That we just could keep being consistent, keep churning out those lap times, and just feeling confident with the bike all the time, compared to what we had with the KTM last season, where I was probably doing around one mid, mid 136s, pretty much off the bat, because we can't qualify well, we couldn't be competitive, and we couldn't fight and unfortunately we just lost a position there to Johan Zarco just going a bit deep into turn one that's cost us a bit of time but here goes Johan Zarco he will have an inside line but you know what I'm going to launch it to the right hander here and use that power of the Ducati I should have the same bike in theory but with the power in power setting three more or less neck and neck with the Ducati but we're really catching up rapidly to Maverick Vinales so much so that we're going deep into turn five getting sucked in with the slipstream effect and now back onto the power we're still within range Maverick there number 12 leading the way two tenths of a second three tenths of a second he managed to pull out a bit more in the corner speed that is typical 120% difficulty AI they're able just to go full power in those mid-corners. Unlike the player, we can't do that. 
Not quite as clean for us, but onto the left-hand side. Maverick a little bit deep there. In fact, no, it wasn't. We were deep, but it looked like he was losing the front ever so slightly, so not quite as pristine as I thought Maverick would be. But now he has the lead. He's, he's breaking away, isn't he? He's just pulling away ever so slightly here. It's going to take a, a lot of effort to catch up to him. But to be honest, if you said to me before I started this video that we could be looking at a podium in a sprint here in Argentina, I would have snatched it off your hands. So 134.6 right there, right then. That's not a great lap time, all things considered. We were doing a 134.4 or 134.3 for the qualifying. But getting into Q2 directly was key because surprisingly enough I think the lap times in free practice were better than they were in the qualifying the AI seemed to just be a little bit more relaxed in qualifying as Johan Zarco gives us the big don't argue going into turn two and now he embarks on his pursuit for position numero uno but oh Johan Zarco no I can't tell you know it feels like we have that massive ex speed acceleration boost but then Johan Zarco's top speed is better than ours so then we can only get close to him but not past him interesting really interesting to see the differences between the Prima Prama Ducati compared to the factory Lenovo Ducati onto the brakes coming around the outside of Johan Zarco into turn 7 not really I always feel good going around the outside there but it never really works not bad if he went a little bit tight to the apex and maybe let off but uh, it didn't quite work out for us there but beautiful apex into turn 9 now into turn 10 I want to try and get past Zarko as quickly as possible there he goes I know the AI usually make that small error and that has paid off but a little bit of contact tensed up for that one I knew that was coming give him the big don't argue back I owed you that from turn 2 now it's turn 13 I tell you what this lap time here if this is good this is actually going to be better than my qualifying it certainly is it's a better than qualifying it's now the new fastest lap begatted by Enea Bastianini. 134-1 for the beast. Enea Bastianini. Somewhere. I don't actually know where he is. Is he in the points? Uh, the championship lead was 10 points. So, no, uh, to be honest, right now as it stands, as we give Johan Zarco another bit of contact, he might have the inside. He will have the inside line for turn three. And all this infighting is just doing Maverick Vinales a huge favour. The chance of going back to back sprint victories is slipping away from us here. Yeah, I've seen him. 134 1 is the B, so I don't I don't know where he is. But it's 12 points for a victory, 9 for second, and 7 for third. So as you can see, we're gaining 7 points on Bastini, meaning that he is not in the top 9. Where is he? I don't know what has happened to my teammates since I got there as we can try to go around the outside of Zarko again. Big hit going into the right hander for turn 7. Alicia Spargo wants to get involved now, it seems. All oh, this messing around, fapping around in the middle parts of this sprint is not helping our chances. Look at Maverick Vinales having a look behind him. Didn't even need to look where he was going as we tried to get close again to Johan Zarco. Onto the power once more. Are we able to close in and then chuck a lunge on the Frenchman? One of my favourite riders in real life. I do really like Johan Zarco and it's very excited to see what he can do. On board the LCR Castrol Honda, but there he goes, a 133.8. Johan Zarco has pulled the pin and he's ready to attack. In second place, he is closing in all the time. Maverick Vinales yet to win a featured race on board the Aprilia, but he has won a sprint race in our MotoGP career mode so far. Is Alesh going to go for that lunge? Thankfully, not. I did anticipate it, I really did. Going to go for that tighter line here. Trying to avoid the lace picking up any speed coming out of the apex. Not close enough yet for, for an attack is Johan Zarco. But he is closing. He is rapid. If, if, we're not, if Maverick is not careful, Johan Zarco will be on him before the final corner. And I would hazard a guess this lap is going to set an even faster one. Time is... Uh, yeah, the little bit of tyre wear is not end of the world, but it's, uh, it's certainly affecting to our pace at the moment. Still managing to get 134s in the previous exchange. Very close lap times there as well, between the 134, 634 and 635. We're on to turn 9 now, onto the power. 
Of course, guys, if you are enjoying the video so far, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I've just made a small mistake into turn 11, but Johan Zarco has made a bigger one. Look at the gap now to Maverick. Probably looking at least half a second lost there into turn 10. Uh, excuse me, turn 12 a moment ago. And now into the left-hander then. Is he... Yeah, I think he did improve. I think he actually improved the lap time there by a minimal 1,000 a second. Was that, was that Jack Miller who went down again? Oh, look at Johan Zarco. He's already through. How the hell did he catch up that quick? And where the hell did Joanne Mir come from? That was only a small error going into turn one. But here comes Joanne Mir. And here comes me back up at the inside. Giving them the big don't argue. Getting feisty against the 120% difficulty AI. That's what you got to do. Maverick has completely lost this one, hasn't he? He had it home and dry. He was over by a two seconds earlier. And there is Johan Zarco on the cusp of winning his first race this season on board the Prima Pram at the Catty squad. It's a sprint race, so it doesn't quite equal as good as a main featured race, but you can't fault the effort and you can't fault the determination. And right now, we're looking at our best lap, which could potentially put us into the 133s. I've never been into 133s in Argentina, but that could be a distant memory now as we make a mistake into turn seven. We've now got Joan Mir and Alicia Spargo to contend with, but getting past one is a job. Getting past two could be a little bit too... Um, it could be a too egregious... We're battling with Joan Mir, trying to position the factories of Cassie up on the inside. There's a lot of pressure. I want the podium here. We're pushing Joan Mir off the circuit, and it's still not enough to deter the both of them into the penultimate corner. Oh, we're losing the front with the medium front, losing it. Oh! We're losing positions left, right, and centre. Oh, look at Alish! Oh, we finished in fourth. Good Lord Almighty. What a finish. And Johan Zarco did improve the lap time right there at the death. He beats Maverick by a whole second. And we missed out by a tenth on the podium with Joan Mir. And Ebastini finished in seventh in the end, so we didn't take as many points as I thought. But bloody hell, Augusto Fernandez at 132.8. That's outrageous. What a lap time for the Spaniard. So still leading the championship. Everything all looking comfortable and uh, relatively clean. Let's move on to the race to see how we fare in that. Well, all good things must come to an end. And unfortunately, the dreaded thing has happened. It's rained again. We're not great in the rain against the 120% difficulty AI. And Air Bastini, the objective is on. I'm fighting... For that manufacturer lead title. Oh, well, look at this. There's a mess going into turn one. Now, bear in mind, every single time we've done the wet weather, there's some, either something goes wrong with the AI or my tyres just completely get destroyed. We're going to find out what's going to happen here today. So far, so good. Everything looks pretty, pretty clean. Never mind. Spoke too soon. What is Maverick doing? He's slipping, sliding, and moving that RSGP as if he was on ice. What has just happened there? Are you just... You can't predict anything in MotoGP 23, you really can't. But the worst case scenario is that even though we have this lead, I guarantee we, we, we don't keep it. The, the soft tyres are going to destroy themselves. It was the recommended tyre choice as well. I didn't take any gambles. I'm quite confident that the soft option will still not last, but it's the one to be on. I did say last time that I would consider turning off the fuel wear and the tyre wear in the wet weather races simply because the AI is just so overpowered but I'm not going to reduce the difficulty I just simply forgot to do it for this one I mean we're already here now we're just sticking with it but we're just going to hope for the best but this is a great test this is a great test now because we suffered so much in the wet weather conditions last season enough that it basically ruined our championship if we can be competitive in the wet in a circuit like Termas de Rio Hondo, then we're going to have a cracking season. Just hoping it doesn't rain, uh, rain too often. I like the rain, but against the AI, it is ridiculous. Cross into the final corner. We have already lost a second on Maverick Vinales. Bear in mind, he should have won the sprint a moment ago, but Johan Zarco had other plans. Will anyone else have other plans now? I'd, lo I'd love to tell and say that it's going to be me to sort him out, but I have no hope and aspiration. And then again, the aspiration's there, and the motivation's there, but is the momentum, is the confidence? I don't think it is. Here goes Bastini around the outside. Look, just passing me there as if I'm just standing still. 
onto the power. Not bad on the acceleration front, we're just not spinning up the rear as much as I thought we would, but look at the state of the rear tyre already. I'm hardly doing anything wrong. Up on the inside of Bastian, he's still rubbing his racing after three years in MotoGP. Still can't separate myself and the beast. Oh, look at Mar uh, Luca Marini, I thought it was Marco Bezzecchi for a moment. Great to see the VR46 Ducatis back up the front. They've not seen them since the first season. And there goes teammate, or excuse me, former teammate Jack Miller. He goes in the inside for turn seven. So it is beginning to unravel. It is beginning to go the way of Duran Duran, and that is to come undone. I don't like our chances now. A little bit nervous. As we're effectively going to be invisible to point soon. Rain still very much heavily downpouring here in turn 11. Alicia Spargo, yeah, he's on the power. Yeah, I can't. Look at the state of that rear tyre already. How, how does the game expect you to do that with the soft option tyres? But then the problem is with the medium is they don't have enough grip in these sort of weather conditions. So as the player, what the hell are you supposed to do against the AI that's this strong? We're fast on the acceleration and we're still catching up to Alicia Spargo as I got really close to the rear of the number 41. Brad Binder, I'm guessing he's going to come on through. Oh, there he is, right on cue. Of course, we replaced Brad Binder last season in the Red Bull KTM. Good to see him back and fighting for positions. Oh, are you joking me? Oh, I'm a, that's my fault. That is absolutely my fault. I completely hold my hands up for that one. Eh, the smallest of contact. That was my fault, though. Clumsy. Very clumsy, I would say. Brad Binder will be fuming. Didn't he get taken out here in MotoGP in real life? I feel like that happened. Answers in the comment section down below if you know the answer. But of course, guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. As we now begin to slip backwards down to possibly is going to be... Oh, there it is, ninth place. Now tenth place. We're going to fight to get try and get a few more points back. It's not enough. It's, oh my god, did I just take out Marquez as well? And this is unravelling, isn't it? I feel like he hit me there. I mean, I wasn't actually doing anything but trying to just stop the bike from going wide. He sort of hit my rear tyre. Of course, front end on rear tyre usually sends the, re uh, the front tyre. Just like it did right there, but look at that. We are now two and a half laps in. We are about to come to the point of getting to uh, three laps as Fabio Quattararo gesticulates his uh, disdain for our movement in that corner. And now the rear tyre is half. 50% of the durability on this tyre is already gone and we're on lap three. We're just starting lap four now. How in the hell are we meant to manage there? And Inea Bastianini is on a 142.4. It's always the rain, isn't it? It's every single time. Goodness me. Whoever's listening to Eurythmics, stop. <laughs> I mean, this is getting ridiculous. This is getting absolutely silly at this stage of this championship. As long as it doesn't rain, I would say that we probably could have still finished relatively close to the podium. But at least now we know. Maybe this is just a bit of a bogey circuit due to the nature of the circuit. It is a quite demanding track on the tyres, but not necessarily for the rear. I'm not really an aggressive rider. You know, I don't push the front end at uh, the, the rear tyre. I don't get it spinning all the time. So to see it take that much degradation is just asinine. That's unbelievable. Great to see Luca Marini on the podium, though. Third place for the man on board the, uh, the excuse me, the uh, Mooney VR46 Ducati. Here goes former teammate Paul Spargo up on the inside of Paul. Not particularly liking that. I would rather keep both hands on the uh, st on the, uh, the steering there, mate. Keep them on the handling but handlebars, and you won't come off. But as we now go up the inside of Paul again, Frankie Morbidelli, who had a terrific race in real life conditions here. Won't be doing that this year, unfortunately, because uh, Termas de Rio Honda is not on the MotoGP calendar. But he was excellent in real life MotoGP here in the Termas de Rio Honda circuit. Paul Espargo still kind of has the door open there, but I do not have the tyre or the confidence to go on through. Fabio Di Giantonio goes around the outside to get through. Uh, Johan Zarco, fast man on track, 142.335. He's looking for double delight here in Argentina. But as it stands, this is a big blow. 
it's surprising really because we had 37 points in the first Grand Prix, finishing fourth, so we then had what a further six points. We were in a fantastic situation, and now because of Bastini now getting up to second and us out of the points, the whole championship has just flipped on its head. We have held the championship lead for three races, two well, one two sprints, one races. And now it's all coming apart. Takanaka Gami up in the inside of the Japanese rider. Digi Antonio was really close to the apex there for turn five. Surprised he didn't lose the front. Here comes Alex Rins, the Kota winner in real life. Does he go around the outside? He certainly does. Look at the look at the corner speed from the AI. Look at Taka, ladies and gentlemen. That was magnificent as we now go up in the inside of the Japanese man. Is it enough to make it stick? Not really. Here comes Marquez now. He's going to get up on the inside for the very innocuous turn nine. That to just quickly twitch there. Thought Taka was going to hit us. Certainly looks ominous as the Japanese rider came closer. And oh my goodness, look who's behind us. Oh, look at the, look at the bike. I can't turn in again. And Brad Binder's gone through. Hopefully he gets back to the points because I was an absolute idiot for making him crash. Also, uh, oh, look, no, it's, uh, this is it. I can't. We almost lost the front then. The rear was coming around as well. That's it. We are now at the back of the grid. This is unbelievable. What what's going on with the rear tire? The thing is, I could I could increase the traction control to try and reduce the tire wear, but then we'll have no speed. Then we'll have no pace. Then we can't keep up. Answers on a comment section down below. Answers on a postcard. You know what? I'm gonna broaden my horizons here. Answers on a postcard. Can't fathom out how to tackle the 120% difficulty AI in the MotoGP 23 career mode in the wet conditions here in Termas Riondo. There is a small dry line coming up, but look at the spin we're getting now from the rear tyre. Could that be my fault? Is that because I put so much effort into better acceleration and corner exit? Could be. Could very well be. Look at the bike, though. Look at it. You would think something is pushing the back end and the front end. Like some sort of magnets on either side, just pushing and pulling. Unbelievable. On lap seven, we'll probably have no tire. It's going to delaminate by that point. Maybe that's for the best as well. Look, I can't. I can't turn into turn eight. I have a, I have a very strong feeling I'm not going to do well now. It's, it's getting impossible to, to even move this bike. Do you remember in on the gas gas thing it was, we took the gamble and we tr pretended to be Brad Binder in Chang International Circuit as we go into the left hand side. I can't do anything. I'm, a, I'm basically a passenger now as we go down into turn 11. Ladies and gentlemen, cut the camera. What can you do, ladies and gentlemen? There's absolutely nothing. So Jack Miller wins with Maverick Vinales and Luca Marini. Where's uh, Nea Bastini gone? Is Nea Bastini in the top 10? Where's Nea gone? Oh my goodness, Nea! We are... Oh. We've absolutely dodged a bullet. We've absolutely dodged a bullet. But Davide Tardotzi and Gigi Delinia, Dimakali, everyone, Claudio's going to be miffed at the state of the Factory Ducati squad. I can't believe that. I've never seen that happen before. I've never seen the AI take a DNF after leading the race or being part of it. I can't believe that. Especially when you decide to uh, retire from the race. I've never seen that. Maverick Vinales is your new championship leader. We only lost eight points in that. That's incredible. Jack Miller won the race and he took fourth, uh, second place with four points behind. I'm, I'm absolutely flabbergasted. I can't believe that. We have absolutely dodged a bullet, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Anaya. Thank you. <laughs> the beast, ladies and gentlemen. He's delivered us no points to help our championship charge. God bless. I'll, I'll, I will remember that. <laughs> Guys, thanks for watching. Sorry we crashed in the wet. Nothing I could do. Like, comment, and subscribe. See you in the next one. Ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.